My son was driving home the other night when he swerved out of the road. I looked up from my phone and he just yelled, Caterpillar, as he threw the truck in park and jumped out of the driver door as fast as he opened it. A few seconds later, he returned with a woolly bear caterpillar. I don't know how he saw it on the road. He saved it from becoming a woolly bear rug. We brought it home and took some pictures and fed it leaves from our burning bushes, and we put it in a one-gallon specimen jar. And it ate, and ate, and ate. He loved the green leaves that hadn't turned red yet. And as this little larva ate, it just pooped and pooped and pooped. I took pictures of that too, because I can. And I've got to remind my kids about all the things you can measure. Insect excrement is called frass. It's a German word with a sharp S at the end of the word. It doesn't matter if it's a liquid or a solid, it's all frass. From the liquid frass, the house flies deposit on the inside of your windows to the pelletized frass of the woolly bears. Now here's where it gets really alien. Woolly bears are three centimeters long. Each pellet was one half centimeter or one sixth of its body length. In two days, he ate multiple leaves and pooped 42 times. I know, because I counted them. And if you line them all up, that is 21 centimeters of frass in two days or, th or three and a half times its body length each day. I know, because I lined them up. That is the equivalent of a six foot tall man pooping 42 one foot bowel movements or roughly the 42 foot length of Scotty, the world's largest T-Rex fossil. But thankfully we don't eat or poop that much. I know because I measured. In exchange for leaves, our woolly bear gave us a photo shoot under the microscope. His wool is actually called ceti. That's Latin for bristle. Individually, these ceta are only three and a half millimeters long and they are covered with thorn-like structures. Clustered together and zoomed in 50 times, the bristles look more like fireworks and are quite breathtaking. Woolly bear CD don't inject venom and usually don't cause irritation, but some people can get dermatitis from handling the larvae. Let's look at woolly bear anatomy. They have a head, thorax, and abdomen with 13 body segments. They have multiple eyes called acelli. They have two anal prolegs, eight abdominal prolegs, six thoracic legs, and mandibles that even look like little legs. The thoracic legs are more like claws or horns. The abdominal and anal prolegs act more like suction cups and allow the woolly bear to grip the branches it's climbing on. This allows them to inch forward, but it's more like if Michael Jackson was moonwalking forward. <laughs> Basically, they pick up their anal prolegs, arch their abdomen forward, lifting their abdominal prolegs, they set down the anal prolegs, and create a wave through their body pushing everything forward. One small step per man, one giant walk for woolly bears. They go by a few different names, woolly bear, fuzzy bear, woolly worm, and hedgehog caterpillar. The last one because of how they curl into a tight, bristly ball when they're disturbed like hedgehogs do. Leave a comment below, what do you call them where you live and what part of the country is that? And have you seen any this year and how many? But whatever you call them, they can be found in the fall season when they are on the move from their food plants to find a dark sheltered spot to hibernate throughout the winter as a larvae. They don't spin a cocoon until spring. Think about that for a second. This larvae stays a larvae through the winter, even in the Arctic. According to woolly bear folklore, the amount of black CT on the woolly bear in the fall indicates how severe this winter will be. The more black bands, the harsher the winter will be. The more middle brown band there is, the more moderate the winter will be. So if you see one with lots of black and a little brown band in the middle, it will be a harsh, snowy, cold, and bitter winter. If you see one with a medium brown band in the middle and some black on both sides, it will be a moderate winter. You should probably still get a ski pass. If you see one with more brown bristles than black, it will be a mild winter. But if there is a little black and then brown and then more black, the winter will start harsh and finish mild. But if you see more brown towards the head, it will start mild and finish harsh. Our little guy is predicting a harsh to moderate winter. Let's see if you got it right. The folklore says the 13 segments of the woolly bear's body represent the 13 weeks of winter. Only where I live, there are more like 16 to 20 weeks of winter, or so it seems, when I'm shoveling snow and miss my grass. Did you know there are woolly bear festivals? Since 1973, for 51 years, residents of Vermilion, Ohio, hold a festival to commemorate the woolly bears. It is said to be the largest single day festival in all of Ohio. And in North Carolina, they have the Woolly Worm Festival and hold worm races. The fastest woolly worm to go up a three foot string wins $1,000 and gets the rights to tell the forecast for that year. Can we take a moment just to recognize how truly terrifying these mascots are? Now I want some woolly bear merch, a stuffed animal woolly bear I can throw at my kids. Add that to my Christmas list. But like all fun folklore, the woolly bear has gone the way of the groundhog and is only right about weather about half of the time. The woolly bear's coloring has more to do with what it's been eating and its species. It also indicates their age. They molt six times to reach adulthood. They become more reddish with each molt. Plus there are well over 250 species of tiger moths, which are the adult form of the woolly bear caterpillars. During the fall, as temperatures fall, the bristles don't insulate the caterpillar from freezing, but it helps them freeze more controllably. When a woolly bear is ready for winter, they hibernate and create a natural organic antifreeze. That's called glycerol. 
It is formed in their hemolymph or circulatory fluid. They create their own antifreeze. To keep from bursting their cell walls and dying, they just freeze. All winter, they can survive down to negative 90 degrees Fahrenheit. In the spring, the woolly bear unfreezes, wakes up, eats again, of course, for a few weeks, and then spins a cocoon with its bristles and pupates, and then emerges about two to four weeks later as a one and a half to two inch wingspan orange yellow Isabella tiger moth. They lay eggs in a wide variety of trees, shrubs, clovers, nettles, dandelions, maples, and elms. We found another caterpillar and you can see its pulse through its body. That species is really cool. As my physics professor, Dr. Jewett used to say, be a student of life. Life will teach you things everywhere you go, even on the drive home.